Good morning. It's great to have you with us here at Unity. We have a very special day today. We are going to hear from Dr. Roland McCready, who is the Director of Research at the Institute of Heart Math and the Global Coherence Initiative. This amazing man has done the research that has let us understand ourselves as transformational beings at a whole new level. We have the beautiful music of our choir supporting that touching of that spiritual self. So as you, as you go through this service, I invite you to reach deep within you and appreciate the magnificent spiritual being. Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. I'm Pam Whitman, the choir director, and here with the Joyful Noise Singers. And we'd like you to stand up and join us in our first song, I'm So Glad I'm Here at Unity. Lots of thanks to our Joyful Heart Singers. <laughs> Wonderful to have them. Directed by Pam Whitman and the marvelous people over there on music we call Fusion. Yes. <laughs> and so if, if any of you are new here to Unity, just welcome. It's great to have you here as a part of this positive path of spiritual living. And uh, because we know we have a part of this family online. Let's turn and wave and just enjoy, invite everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for being with us. All right. Take that deep breath through your heart. Because as we enter into our service now, we enter into that part of the service that we commit to the experience of prayer and meditation. And we begin that by making that shift from our head down to the experience of our heart, taking that deep breath through the heart to make that beautiful connection with this infinite power that flows in and through our beings. And we begin that experience of prayer by sharing together in that beautiful form of prayer of positive affirmation, this acknowledgement of this divine presence. Please join me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Feeling that beautiful presence. Again, there is only one presence 
and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Breathing that love once again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Knowing that this all-loving goodness enfolds each one of us with infinite, unconditional love. And in that, we are so grateful. As we continue in this experience of spiritual connection, this time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to join our choir in the next song as we remain seated and let us take Use it to journey just a little bit deeper within our heart. Taking that deep breath through your heart, let's continue into that quiet place as we 
enter into this deeper experience of prayer and meditation together. Annie, are you, can you share with us our blessing from our heart ministers? Thank you. I will never be lost. It directs me to the places of love and peace. It renews my spirit. It guides me in the ways of compassion and forgiveness for my highest good. Though I may sometimes find myself in fear and discord, I do not lose faith. For the power of my heart goes before me, bringing truth wherever I go. The tenderness brings me comfort. It prepares my way to walk in peace. My joy overflows. Truly, perfection and harmony follow me. Wherever my path leads me, and I will live in the heart forever. And it is so. Again, taking that deep breath through the heart as we move deeper within, as we open to connect consciously in full awareness with this divine presence flowing in and through each one. Let the music be part of that journey into the center of your heart. Father, Father, God, that love flowing through our hearts is your divine presence. We radiate that divine, infinite love. We breathe deeply, drawing it further into our awareness, filling body, mind, and spirit with this radiant divine presence. of the beautiful experience of prayer is to deepen in the feeling of that love, deepen in the experience of this divine connection, beloved presence. Guide us into that greater awareness. Awaken us to know you at death. For this journey within is really an openness to receive that love ever deeper into our beings. To let this infinite care and compassion, this infinite love for our beings to flow in and through us as we receive, are filled. And as it overflows and we bring our love and care to those around us, to children, to parents, to family in every form, 
to let this beautiful blessing that is our presence as a spiritual being, one with this divine, we let it flow through us to bless those in the places we work, to bless the friendships in our lives, and to hold that high watch to know the highest for humankind as it meets the challenges before us. So we breathe that love, and for a moment, let's just send it out to all of humankind, compassion in their struggles. As the questions are brought before us, we send this gentle love of compassion. We send care. And we send peace. Mother, Father, God, you are the love, the compassion, the care, the peace within our beings. And so we enter in and rest in that beautiful peace. Breathe that feeling of peace as we enter into silence. as the Master guided us. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be Mother God, infinite love, beloved presence, we're so grateful to consciously know our oneness with this power that you are within us. We're grateful to be able to send this power of love forth from our beings that it might touch and bless, heal and uplift. And so we take this moment, having touched that beautiful place of stillness, having opened our hearts to receive more deeply this flow of divine love, we now radiate it through our hearts. We send it first of all to our own bodies for a healing and blessing to every cell and system, awakening with strength and vitality. We send this love to mind and heart, deepening our experience of wisdom and understanding. 
this divine love flows through our hearts. As we send it to each one who is dear to us, as we picture them in their mind, enfolding them in this divine love, knowing that for each one, it heals and blesses, lifts and guides, strengthens. We radiate this beautiful love. And we send it across the spiritual community, touching each person and blessing everyone in their lives. This divine love flows through our hearts. as we embrace every prayer request brought here, knowing with each you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. We radiate this love as it goes out from this community as waves of blessing, of peace, of abundance, of wisdom across our communities and our nation and on to bless the peoples of the world. We, we focus in these beautiful prayers of love. All in prayer join us, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. This beautiful love flows through our hearts. So we send it to this wonderful earth that it might touch and bless and bring balance to all her systems, to bring rain where it is dry, calm where there is storm, <coughs> blessing to her creatures. As we radiate this love, we send it about the earth that it might touch the heart of every single person in the earth for beloved presence, you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Breathing that beautiful love. Once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. So, here, now. Amen. Amen.
My name is Mike, and it's my pleasure to highlight some of our upcoming events. You won't want to miss the workshop this afternoon with Dr. Roland McCready, Director of Research at the Heart Math Institute. Join Reverend David this Friday evening and Saturday when our Unity Campus becomes a retreat center. Today is the last day to sign up in the book center or online. The ministerial, ministerial search team invites you to complete a survey to help guide them as they go through the process to recommend a new senior minister. Obtain and return your survey in the sanctuary vestibule, book center, or community room. This survey is also available on our website. Your completed survey is due by May 22nd. Members of the search team will be on the patio today to answer your questions. Tickets for the trivia fundraiser for the Education Building Lift are now on sale on the patio and online. Find out more about these events and other activities online and in today's bulletin. Until you hear the gong, please take a short moment to greet the people immediately around you.
Joyful Heart Singers, thank you, thank you, thank you, and way to go, Annie. <laughs> now I want to share with you a little of my selfishness. Okay, so getting to invite who I want to be up here, I get to invite the people I want to ask questions of. So the man who's about to be up here is a person we actually we were down at Heart Math, and I said, Roland, I, I've got all these questions. And he said he was willing to share those answers with you. So I invited him. Uh, Dr. Roland McCready is the director of research of the Institute of Heart Math. He leads the research at the Global Coherence Initiative. And when you when you go along the, with the experience now, and you read it, oh, somebody's talking about there's this connection happening and there's uh, you know this coherence that that's wonderful and all these folks are coming out with stuff basically they're all taking his stuff because he's the guy that put it on the map that really brought to us the understanding of the transformational nature of the human heart and from that he has brought that into a entirely new world of understanding of our connectedness. And uh, the, Roland and the people at HeartMath have a brand new book out on heart intelligence. I'm deep in the middle of it. It's fantastic. Uh, we've got those in the bookshop. And this has just come out. We get the first ones to, to share. It's a beautiful summary of the research. Roland's going to be talking to you about the research today. So this is the summary of that research. So you can really take a look at the research itself and understand what we are now learning about this amazing connection we have to our heart. So Roland, come on up here. Let's uh, <laughs> great to have you here. <laughs> I get to ask the ask you can put me on the spot. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I, I under understanding that as we work here we perceive this spiritual self. We understand that we are spiritual beings. And uh, that's been something that uh, has often been viewed as at odds with the scientific world. But you've been working on that interaction between the two. Is there anything you're finding within that research that uh, gives us a reflection on that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? <laughs> that was it. We got it. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, as we were listening to the the first part of the service, one of the things that uh, you put a lot of emphasis on is be still and know, uh -huh. right? So I would say our research directly supports, in a very big way, that statement. It's uh -huh. been right all along. Um, I won't go into the scientific detail. It's actually, actually, there's a chapter in the Heart Intelligence book, so people want to know all that. Uh, but basically putting electrodes all over people's bodies, brain waves, hearts, and stuff. In a very rigorous experiment, we found that the heart is the first to get intuitive information relative to, and by the way, there's multiple kinds of intuition. There's brain intuition, but there's a much deeper kind of intuition that ultimately is, that connects us with our larger part of ourself. Heart math, we call it our large, but it's soul, spirit, higher self, God, whatever term your culture calls it, it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing uh, from my perspective. So the, the heart really is the gateway for the spiritual heart to our soul, spirit, larger self. So I can say that science is proving that. And I got that published, by the way, just a little side note, in scientific, peer-reviewed scientific journals, by saying that uh, the heart appears to have access to a field of information outside the boundaries of time and space. <laughs> Perfectly acceptable language for a scientific journal. <laughs> right, that all been proven. But what, what is a field of information outside the boundaries of time and space? If it's not the spiritual heart, if it's not our soul, our spirit, what else could it be? Really. So to me, it's the real intuition that uh, heart math is really all about helping us connect to, it is that flow of information from our larger self. That is what intuition, the real intuition. And as we learn to practice and connect with that, 
it raises, lifts, literally, our consciousness, the vib our vibration, our personal vibration. Which leads me into the second thing that really struck me, mm -hmm. if I may, from yeah. what you said. Uh, you might have to help me, but as you, you just uh, let, let us through it. Through my heart, I radiate divine love, mm -hmm. which enfolds, enfolds the world. Enfolds the world. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely what the next level of research is proving to be true as well. So, um, well, I should shut up when you ask the question. But. So, so <laughs> we've got we've got this this spiritual nature that that is becoming identified. And you explained it as operating uh, through what we call our, our intuition. Mm -hmm. So help us understand what that is, how that, how that works for us. Oh, boy. OK. Um, <laughs> well, that, I don't know how else to say it. Let me give you a little example. I just, just some email I got uh, day before yesterday from one of our trainers who's working with uh, Emory University. They're doing a research study with heart mass and training patients with what they call stress-induced Anyway, you don't need heart disease. Uh, they get stressed, their heart has big problems. So they were trying to figure out how to help these people. So this is an older gentleman. This is a story that one of the trainers is working with. And his story says, yeah, I used to get, we uh, do a beautiful email. One or two sessions that kind of speaks to the transformation of, of aligning with their heart. And he was talking about how the grandkids would come over, he was love of his life, but he'd get all frustrated and all this kind of stuff with the kids because they were doing kid stuff. And he said, I, I did this heart breathing. In the story, you can just feel his passion coming through. I'm not frustrated anymore. I'm actually able to feel the love and connection with my grandkids now. This is after two sessions of learning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so, so there's this, this connection you're yeah. talking about that, that, that happens. Uh, so do we, do we influence each other? How does that take place? What's going what on you, between what us? What do you think? <laughs> the reason why I stand up here on okay. Sunday. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, um, it's fun to be able to, you know, it's some, like so many stories I could tell, but in our unfoldment and the research, but to be able to actually prove scientifically or validate, you know, uh, I think, prove the things that we already, uh, we're already at all tuned in to, you know, bigger reality, things we believe to be intuitively true, to be able to put science on it. And for actually kind of reminded me how old I'm getting to be now. Uh, that, that question, because back in the 90s, we were doing experiments <coughs> to, to show exactly that, uh, that the, the heart radiates a literal magnetic field uh, out of an aura. I'm not saying that auras aren't real, but we can't measure those yet. We can measure it. Uh, so you're all creating a magnetic field that is affecting each other. With today's equipment, we can measure that field about three feet away. Started to call it biofields now in the research. That's becoming a, actually a separate <laughs> term in a lot more of the research circles, which is really cool. And we can, uh, in fact, one of the things I'll, I'll talk a little bit about in the workshop is how that field carries information that we can now measure and decode. So we know we're radiating it. And the next step was to show that our nervous systems are big antennas that are also tuned into that in other information. So there really is a relational energy and communication that goes on. Whether you know it or not, or believe it or not, you believe me or not, it's still going on. <laughs> um, so you're all um, back to service this morning is a, a very powerful thing. The, the data is also showing that when we're together, and say, especially if we like each other, <laughs> that actually is, that actually is really important that there be an emotional connection, a love, compassion, energy, that that act literally amplifies these signals that radiate out into the world. That's why I was saying that you're. Other comment about through the heart, divine love that enfolds the world. Actually, true because the study. The, there's a whole story behind this that how it unfolded. But what we're seeing now, and I'll talk about this in the workshop as well. It's actually one of the first times I've talked about it publicly. Uh, the data is that new. Is that we are literally synchronized and connected with the Earth's fields. So what we're radiating and what, when we amplify it, it is connecting to the Earth's big field. So that energy is going out to the entire planet, literally. We all like, to, you know, at least my background, we always talk about, well, we're all deeply connected on some level, somehow, right? The, the mystery's been, well, what, what's the somehow and what level are we talking about? So we're actually able to start answering some of those questions now. We actually are, literally, and we're able to start measuring that. 
in a, in a way that humanity is really interconnected at a very deep and fundamental level through the, the Earth's energetic environment. Well, I, I know most of the people here may not be aware of the system that you've created through uh, global coherence mm -hmm. and how, what it is that we're measuring to be able to say these things. How's that taking place? The, okay. The, to do science, we have to measure things, obviously. To so measure Earth's, um, I like to kind of, this may not be a metaphor after all, but I'll keep a little bit of a science hat on here, say metaphorically. Uh, we're measuring the, the heartbeat and, heart, and brain rhythms of Earth. And that's manifested in the extremely complex, surprisingly complex magnetic field environment around, of Earth. And to do that, we've got these ultra-sensitive devices called magnetometers that are designed specifically to measure the scale of frequencies that Earth resonates at. And those are in places easy to get to, things like Lithuania, Saudi Arabia, <laughs> South Africa, New Zealand, one, one here at our, our property over in California that some of you may have even visited in the past, Canada and so on. So anyway, all that data comes back and we're able to get kind of Kind of like if you're measuring brain waves, you stick electrodes all over a person's head. Well, it's kind of like doing that to Earth. And then doing a lot of studies of measuring people over long periods and seeing how the two uh, coordinate and dance together. And how do they so. coordinate and dance together? <laughs> well, okay. I, I let myself into that one. <laughs> uh, well, I kind of already hinted at it. We are, what we're seeing now, a study that was just completed with groups of 20 people who wore recorders that record their heart activity for two weeks. Hundred, over 100 people in five countries around the world. And what we're seeing is that people are literally globally synchronized together. Mm -hmm. And there's three types um, of groups, subgroups. Um, two that are really in sync together as groups that respond differently to what the changing environmental earth scale level is. And then another group that seems to be kind of disconnected, unplugged from from the Earth's field, which is probably not the group you want to be in. <laughs> what, what, what's, the, what's the difference for someone, whether you're, whether you're uh, connected with that field? Yeah, so another set of studies that you know, don't have, we don't have the time to go into, but it's indicating, this is pretty f profound actually, that it, it appears that the magnetic fields of the Earth are a, an actual literal energy source that we're connected with and draw energy from. So, so when it's lower, in power, if you have a dis, you know some health issues and so on, that actually gets worse. Uh, it's when it's higher, and it's the opposite if you're young. When the field power is higher, uh, you go do stupid things and get hurt more often. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Actually, true. Okay. Um, uh -huh. So it's a good thing. We want to be interconnected, and I think that's not just a physical health level, but there's also what we're where we're headed now in the social coherence. It's really kind of good to be interconnected at the, at the what I call global information field level with humanity. That's what people really want to be disconnected from and unplugged from. But in my opinion, really. So one of the things I hear is, as we work with prayer, mm -hmm. and the, the belief that our this intention we hold for another, uh, that we have a capacity to uh, impact uh, other people to uh, exchange that greater greater awareness. And uh, you know, one of the things that, that we hear uh, when, when we have many people uh, here who have gone through very difficult, very challenging experiences, and they end up saying, you know, I, I could feel that. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, does, how does that tie in? What's, well, okay. And what may, maybe every bit is important, Roland, what lets us do it? at a more effective level. Uh, that, that's the ledger out of that. Okay, there are gazillion studies one looks under the hood of research showing that the prayer studies and intentionality studies have a remote effects on people. Mm -hmm. But then that's, that's out there. It's denied by, you know, the kind of people who don't like that stuff, but it's true. There's a lot of, a lot of research on that. So I'm not gonna go into that. Well, we're at, that's okay. But like what we're actually doing with the magnetometer data is starting to look at the mechanism, what's under the hood. Mm -hmm. That also includes intuition, so it's kind of, kind of tie together in a way. So um, I'm sure we have a lot of mothers in here. Let me ask you a question, just to get a show of hands. How many of you have known when your child was in distress or doing something they shouldn't be and they were on the other side of town or the other side of the planet? 
A lot of hands, right? So that's not magic. Something <laughs> mediates that. Right? <laughs> so I'm really, what we're seeing is that that acts as this magnetic field again. We're all interconnected through that. And what tunes us to the information of the people that we care about is actually care. But it's, you're, you're tuned to your kids, not the other billion kids on the planet. Right? What a mess that would be. Right? You think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it really is love and care that is the creates the resonance between the information that the, or the person that we, that we care about and uh, you know, the other person through the, through the field environment. I'm probably not answering your question, but uh, so you asked about intention. So I want to want to move back. We're we're looking at both the, this global connection mm -hmm. that we have this this connection that exists through this uh, the energy of the earth and we get down to very personal very direct mm -hmm. connections right. so I'm, I'm thinking uh, what is it within ourselves that lets us for instance use this to really understand a better uh, an, another better or uh, support someone uh, in a in a more effective way. Want the, the short, quick answer? That cuts through the truth. Go for it. Yeah. 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 Our vibrational pitch. Okay. How do how do we our, affect our that? Our own personal vibration, our level of con our our conscious, the, the vibrational state of our own consciousness. So our work so. is essentially raising our pitch. Yeah. 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 The pitch of our conscious vibration, the mm -hmm. sample rate, if I use the scientific term of it. Um, but that's really what it is. Yeah. So how does like, like well, it's kind of like the story I just talked about of the, the elderly gentleman and his grandkids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Time one, time two, by learning to go to the heart, he raised his pitch. Mm -hmm. So now he's above the, uh, the annoyance because the kids did things kids do. Mm -hmm. Right? And able to, to be more in that loving state. And that's what he's been feeding the field. Mm -hmm. Which is another probably thing I should talk about, which I'll go into a lot more in the workshop, but not everybody will be there. So I invite you to ask yourself, what am I feeding the field? Mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm suggesting is yes, when we're together like this and, and being led through wonderful meditations like you did and in the heart, we're, we're way amping up and amplifying that field, but that's not the only time you're connected. <laughs> right? You're always connected. So what is the real ratio when we, when we ask ourselves, what did I feed the field today? How much of it was really being kind compassionate and loving, right? Versus how much of it was, I was a little frustrated because the guy cut me off in traffic or um, impatient and didn't get my to-do list done fast enough. And, and those types of, that all directly relates to our, our, to our pitch, the, the vibrational state of our consciousness. And the way we increase that, the best, quickest way to answer your first question is through the heart. Get coherent, love, care. So these, this, this feeling world, um, and, and I, I would guess your background's a little bit like mine in that I was really raised in a world about what I thought, what I knew, the knowledge that I had collected, and if I'm understanding the, the greater impact that we have is through the feeling world. Oh, yeah. Uh, on multiple levels. So it, it's, you know, a lot of... I mean, I went, I don't know what year, in the 70s for me was a positive thinking stuff, and all the books and the seminars on positive thinking. Um, it was helpful, but didn't do a whole lot for me personally. But what I now know in the lab, just on, a, on our personal level, thoughts do very little to change our physiology. Mm -hmm. It's easy to see in the lab. If you hook people up to all the equipment we have, you can think yourself blue in the face, not much happens. But once you evoke an emotion, big time changes happen in our hormones, our nervous system, all that stuff, right? So there's a whole world of emotions that's not yet understood in the, the greater scientific community that, that we're just getting on the edge of. I mean, for example, we know that uh, when emotions that get triggered in a large enough scale, that creates planetary waves that can be measured. <laughs> Thoughts don't do that. So there's a whole, emotions aren't just some little biochemical thing that's going on in our brain. It's a body-wide thing that is also connected with an energetic level phenomenon as well that is just not yet. The data's there to say this is happening, but how and the mechanisms, nobody has a clue, but it's clear that it is happening. So, so we have 
through Roland's work now, we've, we've got the research that begins to show us both personally what happens when we, we go to the, the feelings that bring us into coherence, so that, that where our, our body changes uh, and, uh, and the impact on ourselves others. is greater. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and then globally. between ourselves. Yeah. And, globally. and then globally. Right. That we're, we're in it together, uh, that, it's, that it's real, it's measured, and we impact that by our collective choice as well as our individual choice. And if I may, I would add to that. You're absolutely right that coming together in groups like what you're doing here has a much bigger impact and it's more important than you might realize in terms of the global field environment. It's not just about you know, do, do good and come to church to have a social thing. You really are making a difference uh, globally. All right. Dr. Rowan McCready. Thank you, Rowan. Take a moment to fill out this card. With the card, you can each request prayer support for something or someone <coughs> in your life. In addition, our heart ministers are available after the service for that wonderful experience of personal prayer support. They are the ones with the lavender souls. Prayer requests can also be sent anytime to our website. The ushers will receive your card with the offering towards the end of the music. It's time for the prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes on the clipboard in back of each chair. Or for those of you at home, just click on the donate button on the Watch Live page. One of the great teachings of truth is the awareness that God is the source of all our good. God is the source of all our good. Every blessing that fills our lives is the expression of the goodness and love of the divine. As we focus upon God as the source of all good, we open to receive ever-expanding abundance. So I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand. Be aware that God is the source of all our good. And repeat our affirmation with me. Together, divine My love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am.
the ones that you don't see up here are a bunch of our teenagers who are off having a fabulous rally with teenagers all around the region. So include them in your blessing together. Children, you are love, special, and important. The light of God shines through you. And let's take hands and sing together our prayer of protection. <laughs> in the earth right now. So let it shine and, and have fun! fun.